Vault Dwellers, and welcome back to the next episode of our Fallout 4 Casual Let's Play. You join Nick and I here in Diamond City, and we need to go in and talk to Piper. Uh, let me see, in between episodes, I've done a little bit of building, trying to get some of our uh, settlements under control um, and built up. I still need to do Covenant and Nordhagen and... Uh, Starlight Drive in. I haven't done any, that much with them. Did a little bit with Nordhagen, but uh, the other two I haven't touched yet. I just haven't had the time. But they're, the others are starting to come along. Uh, and I think that's about all I've done. Leveled up while I was building. But yeah, I think we are good to get our episode started. So, Nick and I need to talk to Piper, and Alex. she should be in here. Well, well. Nikki Valentine walks into my office for a change. What can I say, Piper? You, me, and hard luck all seem to run together like acid rain down an old sewer. You, uh, including your client here in that analogy? So... You two are finally letting me in on this little case of yours. What's the story? Um, yeah, we need, we help. need help, Piper. This man named Kellogg kidnapped my baby. But that wasn't all. He was working with the Institute. He... He gave them Sean. The Institute. Oh, boy. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night, and sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there. But to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is. Or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg. Huh. Uh, he had access. And like that would have <clears throat> had access. In and out. But we both know that angle isn't going to work. Any other ideas, Nick? Talk about a literal dead end, huh? So, a hmm. um, murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. He wasn't gonna talk. Even if I had a way of bringing him alive. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. Who's this Dr. Amari? I'll let her give you her life story in person. Let's stay focused. Hmm. I guess we're gonna need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Amari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? <laughs> I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads. Nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. I already have Actually, some. I think I already have something. Kellogg had this... this thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so... Who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. But if you want to head there together, just say so. Um, we'll take Nick. It's you and me, Nick. Let's get going. Don't worry. We're gonna get your boy back. Just a few more steps. While you two are out, I'm gonna do some more research. I'll be here if you need me. All right. Let's uh, start making our way over to Good Neighbor then. 
can do. Even good people do work. crazy things when they're scared. Ought to be Diamond City's motto. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, there is one stop I would like to make along the way. Uh, let me see if I can put a map marker down. I can find it again. Um, over here. So if... Oh, I can't... Uh, uh, shoot. Because we're here. Hmm. Let's just fast travel here. I want to stop at the Wilson Atomic Toys corporate, corporate headquarters on our way. There is a hollow tape there I want to pick up. Alright, let's What's see that? if we can get in there. There's normally super mutants up on the ceiling there. Well, technically the roof, I suppose. Ooh, we need mines. We are, uh... I've used up what we had. First didn't hear it. Good. Anything useful? Yeah, money. Money, money, money. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Alright, uh, let's see. Let me find the door here. Beat those lights. Ah, here we go. Oh no. That's oh, terrible. Boring. Now, not surprisingly, I do get quite uh, lost in here every time I come, so it may take me a little bit Got to get it. us around. Wish a fucking head would show up. I'd rip his legs clean off. No free stuff here. Certainly a pity. Let's see if we can find these guys. I'm sorry it's so dark. I don't want to turn the light on and give our position away, though. I can help it. I am tired of this place. This commonwealth. Yes, we should move north. Raise out. That's the Both? <laughs> yes, brother. That's right Someone there to build a place like this. Shit. What? Who's there? Nobody. Huh? Um possibly nobody. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Open the doors, thank you. I hear something. Nah, shoot. Hello, someone there. No, 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 no. Can't Must be anybody here. Nothing. Must have been. Ah, Jack. I didn't want that board. Anything's better than ghouls, huh? That was funny. Um, that's not the one I want, but I will take it. Um, 
that's what marks warning. Uh, let me see here. Damn it, Nate, where are you? going to take a miracle to salvage the site contract, and you decided to take the evening off? Look, I wanted to keep the old man out of it, but what can I do? He called me out in front of the board. I had to fire him. That's it. Where do you stand? I want you in my office Monday, and when I'm sure me, we can discuss him. the contract, or we can discuss your resignation. It's up to you. rather kind of glad to see it not attached to a death claw for a change. Oh, I cannot see anything. Alright, watch out, Nick. Oh, here's play tricks on me again! No! You can't hide forever! What is it? I don't know, but it's really dark. Do you know that? I saw you go. Oh! Here, human, human, human. I got a treat for you. Good gravy, there's a lot of super mutants here. Hiding. Oh, come out, I know where come I'm out. at. Wherever you are. Um, down. Ooh, that's the room I want right there too. Can't see a thing. I can smell you out there, you sneak. Not what I wanted to do. I seriously cannot see a darn thing. Whoa, here we go. They're up above us and down below. Gonna find you soon. Yeah, it's over. Bleed and die. Okay. Nick, are you getting us in trouble? Good job, Nick. So too, Nick. And yeah, I did come for some of the bit giddy up buttercups. No, I have an idea for some of them. And I want to pick them up. Especially the ones that are completely built. Sooner or later. Do I really? Oh, no, nope, I didn't want that. Why is it doing that? I can't see anything. Uh. Come on, Nick. I'll be doing the world a service. Oh no, I didn't load. <laughs> one way to get there. I mean, you can tell. I don't have my dress on. Um, sure. Uh, no. Do we need to go in here? Probably not, but experience is good. Sweet. Human, human, human. 
got a treat for you. <laughs> okay. Well, I like treats. Where are you, dude? You're up above. You're above. Oh. Well, that wasn't too bad. Oh, we, oh, we gotta. I am so lost already. Um, I guarantee I have a bolt that could stop you. dirty water. It makes um, vegetable soup and I think razor grain soup. I will take that. Alright, which way do we need to go next? Gonna find you soon, Are we in there? I think. Lord, I don't know. Always takes me forever to find my way around in here, but we don't have the... Uh, we need the card reader, so back out, Nick. We need to go um, up. Oh, what a fight. As soon as I find up. What? <laughs> Who's there? Uh, up. Ooh. Alrighty. Keep a moving, keep a moving, ball. I did keep something. Moving. All right. Um. All right. I just, I can't see. It is so dark in here. Um, what was that? I saw that. I no, I don't. Stuff. Uh, you and me both, dear. You and me both. All right. I know there. There. See, there's an up. <laughs> But I don't remember how to get to the up. Um, elevator doesn't work. Is that, are those stairs? No, they are not. Sad. No, no. Darn it. Ooh, what's that? Nothing. Ugh, Nick, help. I need a detective. Detect me upstairs. <laughs> Oh no. I knew this would happen. Someone there! No. See, I knew. I am terrible at directions. I apologize. Alright, back this way. Fight today. Huh? What's that? Alright. Now if we get back in here. And they go back around this way. Uh, let's see. I couldn't go that way, so I need to go over here. Um, Alright, that's a dead end. What's this? This is just the room. Alright. Um, that check you. Ooh, I'll take that. And then I'm back downstairs again. Dang. You look like a counter doing cogwheels, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, come on. And that's the hallway we came down. Heck of I now. Oh, no, here's stairs. Annoyed. Stairs work. I'm gonna shot that giddy up butter. Oh, here's play tricks on me again. Alright. Um I think sound, what is it? Can't we turn Ooh. Can't we turn on the uh, turrets here? I'm in.
Nope. You can. Something there. Don't break noises. Okay, now we got the ID. Yay. Alright, Nick, too close. Too close. Okay, I know we have to go up there, but I, I need this giddy up buttercup. Yep. Ah, uh, he might have taken him out already. Sad. Oh well. Ah, yeah, it's stuff. All right. Let me see if I can. Yeah, he took out our turrets already. There yeah. you are. All right. Well, there's one. He took out the other one. Nick, where are you going? You gotta go. I hear something. Around. Oh no, there you are. No more games. Time oh, to die. I think there's another key up here as well, somewhere. Yep, right there. The headquarters key, so that's nice. And then this is just a dead end room. Okay. Just with him in it. Alrighty, alright. Fair enough, fair enough. And I saw that door. All right, let's go through the store first. All right, is this the room I'm looking for? Maybe. Minder. Yes, this is the room I want. I need the toys. <laughs> Here? No, I think it's in his little office there. Yeah. I think it's in here. Open the door. There we go. No. No one here. Nice. There's the one I want. And I uh, don't need that. And let me see. Go ahead. Hi, Daddy. When are you coming home? You work too much. I want you to read to me again. Mommy says you're helping all the horses find good homes. Take care of them, okay? I love you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mother Cup says she loves you too. We miss you. at all of them and that is the hollow tape that we want for Arlen Glass alright um and no I don't like combat armor anything else here I don't think so let's see what we have here Room. All right, Nick. Come on. We got everything we needed here. I'd like to go out the rough access if I can, just because there's um, 
Sometimes there's a legendary uh, um, super mutant up there. What? Who's there? You playing hide and seek? Not today, though. Oh, he's already dead. A quick draw walking cane? Ooh. We'll be taking Okay. Yeah, if you say so, Nick. Alright. And how far down is it? Um. Ooh. Nice. How far the fuck are we? Mm. Good job, Nick. We didn't die. Okay, now we need to make our way over to Good Neighbor. I think it's not too far. Oh, yeah, no, it should be, uh... Oh, Raider. <laughs> um, let me see. Is that Hubris Comics? Yes, it is. Which means we just need to go over this way. Whoa, frame rate. I always start telling when you're building too much when the frame rate tanks a lot. Especially in downtown. Um, you know, we have not gone through the Massachusetts State House building yet either. And I would like to do that. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll do like an episode where we just go through, um, uh, some of the different locations that don't really have any quest or anything tied to them. Maybe like a, just a free roam, uh, We still need to pick up um, the case files from Nick's office. I'd like to do those quests as well. The only thing is, is if I do that, it's going to kick off um, Far Harbor DLC. Because Nick it gave me the uh the uh he started talking about oh the next time we go we need to go over or next time we're in Diamond City we need to go back to the office. Um so he wants to kick off uh Far Harbor. I don't know if I'm quite ready to do Far Harbor yet. I think we're at a good enough level. We're level 52. But I don't know that storyline wise I'm ready to do Far Harbor. Come on, Nick. We got things to do in Good Neighbor. Did Nick follow? I hope. I hope so. I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, what do you think? When should... When do you think we should do uh, Far Harbor? Because I can go anytime. I just uh, trying to figure out a way to fit it in and make it make sense. Are you with me, Nick? I hope you're with me, Nick. I don't want to have to go back out there for well, you. Well, yep, there you are. Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten about the lonely. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. <laughs> hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. 
Oh, Nick, how was supposed to ladies' man, huh? Did we get the magazine down here? I think we did. I think I was down. Yeah, I think I was down here and got it. Although it's possible that I have not. Doctor Amari. Yes. I remember you. The memory inducement. Vault one eleven, right? Yeah. No, I have not got it. Hell yeah. Grognak the barbarian hollow tape knife. Kellogg's brain. We need your help, Doctor. I need the memories from a man named Kellogg. But he's dead. I know it's asking for a miracle, Omari. But you've pulled off the impossible before. Are you too mad? Putting <clears throat> aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who could make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Oh, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. <laughs> hey, I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I okay. start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? <laughs> Let's That's see. funny. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Tell me you have a way past this, Doctor. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right, let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. Okay. On the other side. All right, Nick. Now I'm probably gonna just run through the memories. I'm not gonna sit there and go through all the options. I'm in combat, really. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. How can I, really? I cannot believe this, really. I am not in combat. Alright guys, I will be right back as soon as I get out of combat. Alright, I had to go and clear out the whole building of super mutants before it put us back into uh, the blue. So now we can go ahead and do these, the memory lounger. And like I said, I'm probably just going to run right through it. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. 
It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. All right, here we go. Woo. Bright light. Can you hear me? Ah, oh, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. Okay, oh, there we go. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. These are actually all really very this interesting, be what we're looking for. and really gives there a good insight. Another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try and, that one. Uh, okay, Doctor Omari. Into Kellogg's brain and what made him tick. We'll see. But we don't know anybody here, and now with the baby. Come on, Sarah. You've got to give it a chance. Finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that at the NCR. NCR, huh? Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. All right, back we go. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us? And we wouldn't fuck with you. I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Basically, his wife and daughter were murdered, and he went after the people who killed them. And then he ends up finding the Institute and going to work for them. Mind if we sit down? Suit yourself. Kind of like a mercenary for hire in this part of his life. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Yeah, this is where he finds Mr. the Hello. Institute I'm glad you when he's older. So, you're with the Institute. I think it's so creepy when he looks at you. It's you like really he knows that Wait. you're in here. Getting warmer. All right. One of these has got to tell us something. Yeah. We're running out of brain here. Uh, oh, he did have oh, a very little one brain. That looks here we mostly go. Intact. Connecting now. Cryogenic stasis. And this is Suspended. us. Right? Again. Not that one. I'll try to this locate one. another memory as quickly as I can. There we are. Please try to remain calm. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. Font C6. Down the hall near the end. And this is what kicked off the whole events of Fallout 4. Well, after we woke up. This is the one. Here. Open it. <laughs> is it okay? Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Okay? Come here. No. Come here, baby. No. I've got it. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm not giving you son! God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Yeah, here we go. Whenever you're ready. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory. So, good news, I think. Alright, now it's 
gotta wait. <laughs> this one takes a little while sometimes. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Oh, the new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the Coursers, they weren't built to blend in. Yeah, I didn't mean to click on him. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. Kellogg. There we go. It's okay. One of these days, you're going to get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's oh, no. somewhere oh, in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Darn it. Wow. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. I may have to cut this part out if the music comes across. We'll see. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Come on. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there Thank as you. soon as you're ready. Yes, come on, please. Oh, good gravy. Where did the music come from? Okay, I don't know what kind of side effects. All right, wait a minute. Did it turn my radio on? No. Procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you I'm feel? I'm fine. I'm okay, doctor. Thank you. That's good. But I want you to keep monitoring yourself. We have to be sure there's no long-term damage. Are you... Ready to talk about what happened in there? Um, we got what we needed. The Institute uses teleportation to get in and out. Yes, their greatest secret has finally been revealed. But that only leads to more questions. How does it work? Where do we go next? That scientist Kellogg was supposed to track down. Virgil. We need to find him. You're right. A rogue institute scientist could answer all kinds of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That doesn't make sense. No one goes there. Not even if they were desperate. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new. But the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. If we need to find Virgil, then I'm going after him. If you're going to go, be prepared. 
You'll need some way to combat the radiation there. It's called the Glowing Sea for a reason. I'll find a way to get through the Reds. Don't worry. Good luck, and be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Alrighty. Well, hopefully that music did not come across, but if it did, I might end up having to cut some of this out just because of it, so we will see. Alright, Nick. Nick. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Now, see, I really wish they had continued doing this, like, occasionally, every once in a while, you would talk to Nick and you would get Kellogg. That would have been so cool. Kellogg? Is that you? What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Um... Let's get going, Nick. Been one heck of a ride so far. Let's see where it takes us next. I think we ought to talk. Oh, sure. Are you upset? Is something the matter? You sound upset. What? Oh, no, no. We've just been traveling a while now, and I figure there hasn't exactly been equitable distribution of information. Gotten a decent glimpse into your dirty laundry, but you still don't really know a whole heck of a lot about me figure that offer to balance the board. So, anything you want to know? What do you remember about the Institute? It's all pretty hazy from back then, but now and then I get glimpses. Life inside the Institute, they keep you isolated. A single test chamber was my whole world for years, and someone was always watching. Then one day, you wake up on the other side. That's it. They've cut you loose. Welcome to the brave new world. With such people in it. What's with the outfit? After I started the agency, it just seemed like the sort of thing a detective ought to wear. <laughs> I got some old memories, pre-war. Faded to all heck, guys dressed like this, doing what I do. Putting on the hat and trench coat, and I figured it let folks know I was serious about the whole thing. Clothes make the man and all that. Guess I felt they made me the man I wanted to be. So, who are you, Nick? That's a question I've been trying to figure out myself for a long damn time. I know I'm a simp, authentic institute handiwork, but I'm still mechanical, not bioengineered like the fancy synths giving everyone the willies these days. I get tune-ups now instead of checkups. My memories, my personality, they're all lifted from some cop who volunteered for an experiment back before the war. They scanned his brain and copied it onto the hardware that runs between my ears. Don't know why they chose to make a robot based on some pre-war cop instead of a math genius or a bioengineer. Hey, maybe that's why the Institute tossed me in the garbage instead of turning me into one of their people snatchers. Wait, the original Nick was from my time? Sure was. Which meant when I finally ended up out here, it was quite the rude awakening. I remember waking up one day in a garbage heap, a body in tatters and a head full of memories belonging to a man who'd been dead for 200 years. Suffice to say, it was a confusing couple of weeks. <laughs> Folks didn't really know much about synths back then, so when I finally ran into people, they mostly treated me with caution rather than hostility. Kids, <laughs> they weren't afraid. I think his name was Jim. The first person to actually speak to me after I got the boot from the Institute. My first human contact in this world. Grilled me for an hour. <laughs> Once they'd seen I wasn't gonna hurt anyone, the other folks in the neighborhood came out to ogle the mechanical man. It eventually turned into a pretty swell soiree. The local mechanic even gave me a once-over free of charge. Those people, they, they treated me like a human being. I've been trying to return the favor ever since. 
It's a surprisingly rare trait out here sometimes. It's something I've noticed you got a fondness for. Part of the reason I've stuck around this long. If you're good to people, they'll be good back. That's something I've always believed. Couldn't agree more. Well, I expect you're about as bored as can be listening to me rattle my skeletons. We should probably head out. And we will do that in the next episode. So thank you for joining me. I've been Ball Girl. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I hope I see you in the next one.